Good evening and welcome to evening prayer at St. James Episcopal Church in Skinny Atlas, New York. Uh, if you need a copy of the program for the service, you can go on to uh, stjamesscan.org or if you have a Book of Common Prayer, I'll be uh, giving you the page numbers as we go through the service. So I'll be opening with a couple sentences of scripture and you will need, uh, if you're using the Book of Common Prayer, to be on page 116 and in a couple minutes we'll uh, be saying the... Um, confession of sin together. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise to hear his holy word and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Please join me in saying together, the confession of sin. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all our goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The Invitatory and Salt and Psalter are on page 117. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And the Phos Hilaron, O Gracious Light, is on page 118. Please join me in saying that. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. And assisting me tonight with the readings and the prayers is Sister Marie Patricia Hughes. And I forgot to mention the tech lady, Danae Heidi. So thank you both. Marie? And while we're introducing, thank you, Richard, from Syracuse for coming again, and also our, our lovely and beautiful friend. Our psalm tonight is on 140, our psalm 145, verses 10 to 19. And I'm going to ask you to read it along with me, but we're going to read it quite slowly and deliberately, if that's all right with everybody. And if you are in using the Book of Common Prayer, it's on page 802, 802. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make, make known, known the glory, glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. 
that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his works and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson tonight comes from the book of Ephesians, and it's the New Living Translation. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on the earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ. Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. As slaves of Christ, do the will of God with all your heart. Work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good we do, whether we are slaves or free. Masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Don't threaten them. Remember, you both have the same master in heaven, and he has no favorites. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together, the Magnificat in the Book of Common Prayer. You'll find it on page 119. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson tonight is from the book of Luke, chapter 13, and it's from the Common English Bible. Jesus traveled through cities and villages, teaching and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone said to him, Lord, will only a few be saved? Jesus said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow gate. Many, I tell you, will try to enter and won't be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and shuts the door, then you will stand outside and knock on the door saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will reply, I don't know you or where you are from. 
then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught us in our streets. He will respond, I don't know you or where you are from. Go away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets of God's kingdom, but you yourselves will be thrown out. People will come from east and west, north and south, and sit down to eat in God's kingdom. Look, those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis, can be found on page 120 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please say it with me. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For my reflection tonight, I really uh, am going to spend quite a bit of time on the, the uh, psalm, but just a couple of things to say about the other readings. Actually, the only thing I want to say about the first one is really to repeat the last few words. God has no favorites. They're all the same as far as God is concerned. We are all the same. And in the second lesson from Luke, uh, Jesus traveling towards uh, Jerusalem, speaking and preaching. And um, it reminded me of, I, I don't know, would you ever use the expression, uh, you'll miss me when I'm gone? I sometimes do with my children when, when they're complaining about something I may have said, or, but it's not enough to get into a big to-do about. Um, but I, I think here Jesus is just frustrated. He knows his time is short uh, in this world. He's on his way to Jerusalem. That people, he doesn't see people changing their, their ways, treating each other with kindness and love. Um, and he's like... You're going to miss me when I'm gone, but you're going to have to figure these things out. So very quickly, uh, just those, those two readings, I suppose I could spend more time on those. But I, when I found that the psalm was from uh, 145, Psalm 145, I remembered, I thought I remembered that one of my favorite poets, Mary Oliver, had written a poem based on Psalm 145, and sure enough, I dug around and found it, and I want to share it with you. It's really beautiful, and in it, it starts out at the ocean. She's walking on a beach. I think if I were listening to this rather than reading it, I would close my eyes and just find, picture an ocean beach, so lots of waves and the sand and uh, wind and sun, so uh, a good deal of this poem does uh, deal with the beach and, and the creatures there. Uh, but throughout the whole poem, she asks herself a lot of questions about what's going on in life. And toward the end, uh, she makes a, a moving, a rather moving um, proclamation, I guess, to, to God. So the, the title of this is, On Thy Wondrous Works I Will Meditate. And then in parentheses, it says Psalm 145. So I just want to share this with you. All day, up and down the shore, the fine points of the wave keep on tapping whatever is there. Scatter of broken clams, empty jingles, old oyster shells, thick and castellated, that held once the pale jewels of their bodies, such sweet tongue and juice. And who do you think you are sauntering along? five feet up in the air, the oceans of blue fire around your ankles, the sun on your face, on your shoulders, its golden mouth whispering, so it seems, you, you, you. Now the afternoon wind, all frill and no apparent purpose, 
takes her cloud-shaped hand and touches every one of the waves so that rapidly they stir the wings of the eiders. They blur the boats on their moorings. Not even the rocks, black and blunt, interrupt the waves on their way to shore. And one last swimmer, is it you? Rides their salty infoldings and outfoldings until peaked, their blue sides heaving, they pause, and God whistles them back, and you glide safely to shore. One morning, a hundred pink and cylindrical squid lay beached, their lacy faces, their gnarls of dimples and ropey tentacles, limp and powerless. As I watched, the big gulls went down upon this sweetest trash, rolling like the arms of babies through the swash. In a feathered dash, a calligraphy of delight, the beaks fell, grabbing and snapping. Then was left only the empty beach, the birds floating back over the waves. How many mysteries have you seen in your lifetime? How many nets pulled full over the boat's side, each silver body ready or not falling into submission? How many roses in early summer uncurling above the pale sands, then falling back in unfathomable willingness? And what can you say? Glory to the rose and the leaf, to the seed, to the silver fish. Glory to time and the wild fields and to joy and to grief's shock and torpor, its near swoon. So it's not hard to understand where God's body is. It is everywhere and everything, shore and the vast fields of water, the accidental and the intended over here, over there. And I bow down, participate and attentive. It is so dense and apparent. And all the same, I am still unsatisfied. Standing here now, I am thinking not of his thick wrists and his blue shoulders, but still of him. Where do you suppose is his pale and wonderful mind? I would be good. Oh, I would be upright and good. To what purpose? To be shining, not sinful, not wringing out of the hours petulance, heaviness, ashes. To what purpose? Hope of heaven? Not that. But to enter the other kingdom, grace and imagination, and the multiple sympathies to be as a leaf, a rose, a dolphin, a wave rising slowly, then briskly out of the darkness to touch the limpid air, to be God's mind servant, loving with this body's sweet mouth, its kisses, its words, everything. I know a man of such mildness and kindness, it is trying to change my life. He does not preach, teach, but simply is. It is astonishing, for he is Christ's ambassador, truly, by rule and act. But more, he is kind, with the sort of kindness that shines out, but is resolute, not fooled. He has eaten the dark hours, and could also, I think, soldier for God, riding out under the storm clouds against the world's pride and unkindness, with both unassailable sweetness and consoling word. Every morning, I want to kneel down on the golden cloth of the sand and say some kind of musical thanks for the world that is happening again, another day. From the shawl of wind coming out of the west to the firm green flesh of the melon lately sliced open and eaten, its chill and ample body flavored with mercy, I want to be worthy of what? Glory? Yes, unimaginable glory. O oh Lord of melons, of mercy, though I am not ready nor worthy, I am climbing toward you. We'll continue with the Apostles' Creed which is on page 120 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers will be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 121. Please join me. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Intercessory prayers B will be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 122. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. That your holy angels may lead us in the paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another in all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. At this time, we invite those on Facebook to post your prayer request and those in church to speak yours if you like. I would ask tonight for prayers for those who have recently died, especially remembering my cousin Joan DeMeo, who died last night and who we have prayed for at all these services for the past few weeks. Please pray for her family and my cousin Frank as he loses the love of his life for the, the, who he has been married to for the past 72 years. Oh. And I'd also ask prayers for my sister Jean, who is just being released from a broken hip surgery in uh, Highland Hospital in Rochester. Uh, she came through the surgery, and we're just waiting to get word and how she will be. Mm -hmm. And I thank you very much for your prayers for her and for my family, who is facing... a several decisions right now. Are there anybody in church that would like to offer some prayers? Jean, what's your grandson's name? Pardon? Landon. We'll pray for Jean's grandson, Landon, who is, most people know, is having surgery on his ear and has been having to go back and forth to California for treatment. The prayer of the day. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to say a prayer also for our staff. We have a wonderful staff led by our rector, Becky Kerfer and Kip and Danae and Michael and Laura and um, Nick and I hope I'm not for and Chuck. They all deserve our prayers and our gratitude for all that they do for us and how hard they work. 
And also for Nancy Graham, thank you, Danae, because she is our, certainly our ambassador to all those who need her. A prayer for the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Also, I forgot Nicole Bova, who is our financial person and our great vestry who met last night and uh, those, Bill Spalding, uh, who is recovering from surgery and uh, for other people on the, uh, for Suzanne who's traveling. So let us keep them in our prayers and thank them for the wonderful work they do for all of us. A prayer for the nation. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land that barriers which divide us may crumble suspicions disappear and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. You, O oh God, have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. A prayer for mission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Coming activities uh, this Sunday, the 30th, from 1 to 4 at AME Zion Church on Franklin Street, Auburn, will be a trunk or treat event. So uh, you may certainly join that if you're so inclined. Um, movie discussion by the Racial Justice and Reconciliation Commission. We'll, we'll be discussing by Zoom the movie 13th, which is now showing on Netflix. Uh, this will be November 10th at 6.30, and it's recommended that you watch the movie, if possible, before um, coming on to the Zoom and, and discussing it. Uh, sacred Ground classes will begin uh, in early November, which means next week, I believe. It is a course that is um, film and readings based. It's a dialogue series um, on race grounded in faith. And it, it deals with all sorts of situations, uh, African American, Native American, Asian American difficulties in this uh, culture and, and country. It is also on Zoom and um, more information could be received by calling the office here at St. James. And the Diocese of Central New York is offering a pilgrimage in February, a short pilgrimage, just a few days, to Montgomery, Alabama to visit, mainly to visit the Legacy Museum there. It's a February of 23. So if you're interested in looking into that, um, just look up the Diocese, uh, Episcopal Diocese of Central New York is its full name. And All Saints Sunday, um, the, the Sunday after this coming one, um, you're asked if you are going to be attending to bring in um, framed photos of your loved ones beforehand. They will be set up in church, all over the church uh, for the service, or if you just want to bring pictures uh, to hold in your on your lap during the service that, that day so that pictures of, of people that you'd like to remember. I, that's all I have. Anything from you, Marie? Let's 
end the service with the general uh, thanksgiving, which is on page 125 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please join me. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all the ages. Amen. Amen. And before uh, we finish, I just wanted to thank again my ass assistants tonight, uh, Sister Marie Patricia Hughes and Danae Heidi. My name is Carol Murphy. I don't believe I said that in the beginning of the service. Uh, so let's complete this. Uh, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.